Today's Captain's Blog is made possible by a grant from Luke the Mad Ginger O'Rourke. Thank you, sir. you mind if I take some video, sir? Oh, go right ahead. I teach kids about science. Oh, well, go right ahead. Okay. It's a wealth of fun in this one. Yeah. I'm going to start right in a firebox and work my way out. The what? The maker plate. With, uh, well, you know, it would be on the uh, front. Uh, yeah, the description of where it's made and who made it. Yep. Yeah. Fearless is the brand of the, uh, the name of the boiler. George.
That's absolutely beautiful, sir. Runs like a Swiss watch. How old is she? Uh, 1905. 1905. That's two years after the Wright brothers. <laughs> in the bottom we've got the firebox and that's loaded in from the end with in this piece of wood though you'll see steam engines that are fired from coal, oil, even propane in modern ones. Fire goes down to fire tubes, there's water mixed in, you can start out with water in it and then to add water in there's an amazing little device and this is one that we're going to talk about a lot in the future. For these, and these are injectors because you need to be able to get water into a boiler that's under pressure. Some really cool bit of thermodynamics and some use the pressure of the boiler to set it. Kind of counterintuitive. So while it's boiling, now you've got steam, which has a very high energy density. That steam gets delivered. So up here, we'll get into that in a second. That's up in here. Outer jacket is This cylinder is what's called double acting. So it's a piston inside, right now, and it's at really this end. And when it's at this end, a valve opens, and it makes this little steam push the piston all the way to this end. And then this valve closes, this valve opens, and it pushes it back. It has to go back and forth, and it's double acting because it can push on both sides of the piston. A lot of the engines that you'll see out here today are what's called single acting. They only push on one side, usually this end and it has to have the flywheel to carry it all the way around so it can push back again. The piston, moves the piston rod here, moves it back right here, and that can go back next to the crankshaft, which connects to the flywheel, and that gives us the inertia to carry through the other halves of the cycle to do work. So that out on that end, instead of having really jerky movement, because this is only applying power at each end, that lets it be nice and smooth all the way out to be able to do work on the other end, which you get through the big belt. Now here's where we get into some of the weird stuff. Right here, this is called a fly ball governor. And there's three steel balls, and the faster this spins, and this is controlled right off the line right here. This, this, pull, this belt goes to the pulley, and that goes through the gear system, nice set of bevel gears, and that makes this spin. As this spins, when they go out, it pulls the top down, and that shaft goes right down through into here, which controls the valving for the feed, the steam feed, into the cylinder. So it all works out so that the faster this spins, the more it closes the little valve. As the valve closes, the amount of steam going into the cylinder is reduced, so the engine slows down. So that, usually it works backwards. In that event, it's preventing this from moving too fast. But, if you've got this all running and everything's cool, you don't want to have to sit here and ride the knob, it's a pain in the butt. So what you do, is when you start doing work out there, this slows down, because you're taking energy away from the system here, and you're putting it out there. And when this slows down, the balls come in, that opens the valve, and it gives it more steam. So if you give this a whole lot of load, these come in to give it what for, because you need more steam to do the same amount of work out on that end, otherwise the engine will slow down. Yes. Comes out through the firebox. Is that through here? This is pretty long. This is here. You can see it in the ground. Okay. When 
then we put that fixed in. And then this will pull. So when you first start the steam engine, this particular kind of steam engine, and you've probably seen this in the movies, and I'm about to really ruin a bunch of movies for you. When this is running and everything's just fine, the only thing that comes out the top is either absolutely clear or pure white. When you see it in the movies and you see like the big steam locomotives just shooting thick black smoke, that's because he's got the draft system cranked up to 11. Here's how it works. When he first lights the fire, the fire is only down here, but all the water is up here. You want to get as much heat through as much water as you possibly can. So there's a whole bunch of tubes that go down and those tubes carry the fire and the heat. That's why they call them fire tubes. The water is all around the tubes. fire at this end, down here, this little end here is called the smoke box. So you got the fire box on one end, the smoke box on the other. This is an open area. And that Out. This works like a normal, regular chimney. But this chimney has a little secret to it. Down in here, when you get up enough steam, when you've got pretty much any kind of pressure, you can vent some of that steam off into the, into the smoke box to the chimney. What that does is it creates, it's a venturi. You're blowing it up. There's a, a little pipe in the middle shooting straight up. And when that shoots up, it draws all the air around it. And that creates a draft. Am I looking stupid there? Do I have anything going on? There? No, I had ash go up my nose. Oh, okay. It was you. All right. He's in there like... So that creates a forced draft. And if you do that in the movies, when you create the big forced draft and you crank it up really high, it'll pull ashes out of the firebox and shoot them up the chimney and everything turns black. It's really manly. It's just for show. For this system, the real reason they have that is so that when the engine's under load, you can have the draft kick in and give you more heat. You're going to burn more fuel, but that's what you have to do to make more heat and get more steam for more energy on the outside of the engine. What did I get wrong? <laughs> I can give you a graphic demonstration uh, if, if you want to take a picture of the fire at rest. Oh, sure. You can take that graph right over the uh, valve. You get steam stuck in? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. You want to come over here? Hang on a second. You want to be back here a little bit? Okay. You want to look right in there. I'm trying to make okay. room for the kids. Okay. All right. So this is what the fire looks like at rest. And when the draft kicks in, you can see it gets sucked right down the fire tubes. All those tubes along the back wall, those are the fire tubes. And you can see how the fire gets way hotter in a hurry. And it sucks it all right up. You can see the flames actually getting sucked right up into the tubes. Thank you, sir! <laughs> that worked great! What great! All of them. I, I deal with kids from his age to your age. About 16 million of them. 
question. About 160 countries. Through what media? I work with the Geek Group National Science Institute in Grand Rapids. And we work through the internet, we work through school groups, all over the place. Here! Well, you do a very good, good job. Well, I try. Because if I screw it up, I have a thousand people on the internet that are all telling yeah. me I'm an idiot. Your credibility will suffer. Yeah. 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 The Geek Group? The Geek Group. Letter Street. Yes! Oh my god. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake. Have you ever been? I have. Certainly have been. Okay. Good. you got to bring this on, Bob. In fact, I've got something for you. I'm, uh, Jack said that I've got to donate uh, the machine that I got. But and I'm sure you've got to look at that because I was just looking at it. But anyway, it's just, uh, yeah. Pretty impressive what you guys are doing. How hard would it be for you yeah. to bring this down and let you do a whole big video on it? Uh, it would be, uh, it would be a lot of tasks. If you want. Yeah, I can do that. We can, we can even wait till it cools off. We don't have to sweat next yeah. to this thing. Chris. Chris. And you are? Dale. You're Dale. Yeah, I'm sorry for the blow. Oh, pal. It takes an hour to get these things off. It's terrible. <laughs> so what are we missing? Uh, you covered, uh, you covered the oil. 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 Oil.
there's a high-tech mechanical oiler here, which works by pressing the button, and you will see this used. If you ever get around steam engines, this gets used a lot because you have to lubricate everything manually. It isn't like a car engine where it just sucks it up and pumps it through everything. This all gets done by hand with one of these. So we talked about how the piston and the crankshaft works. That's everything that gets the energy out. But there's a lot more going on. And if you, if you watch it down in here when it's working, you'll notice at a different time, but at the same speed than the crankshaft, you'll see this in the back moving about a little bit off. They're not like straight off like this. They're off by about like 90 degrees. They're a little bit out of phase. This is the eccentric strap. And this is moving the other thing back in there. You see there's the piston valve here, or the, the piston rod here. Well, there's another rod back there. That's the valve rod. And that goes to the D valve, which in this engine it's called a D valve. Different types of steam engines have different types of valves. If you want to see something really cool, check out a cordless. But the D valve back there, because it's shaped like a D, is what's admitting steam in this end or this end. And they don't work perfectly out of phase because you have to have a little bit of lead. You want that valve to open before the piston is actually all the way done, and all, it's, it's timed really weird, but it's because steam expands. You're not just pushing it in with the pressure. The steam is actually expanding in there as a piston. On the other side, we saw these earlier. These are called the blowdown cocks, or the blow-off cocks. Right now, while this engine's just sitting still, the steam in each end of the cylinder is condensing back into water, because it's, it's radiating thermal energy and when water cools off it goes or when steam cools off it goes back into water and if he was just to turn this on right now without opening these it's either not going to work or it might work but make very very expensive sounds because you can break the engine because steam will expand you can compress steam you can expand steam right now inside here there's relatively high pressure steam it's probably about 60 pounds so we've got about 60 pounds of pressure, which doesn't sound like a whole lot because you used to see us work with like hydraulic stuff, and like 5,000 pounds. 60 pounds of pressure inside there is twice the pressure in the tires in your car. And that means that right now, at every square inch of this whole boiler, there's 60 pounds of pressure on every single one. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when you add it all up, there's several tons of energy trying to get out of there and cook me in a screaming lobster style death. So when you focus all that energy down into here, you still get 60 pounds on every square inch of the exposed area of the cylinder. And if you don't let that out, if you don't let the water out, the water can't compress, and all that energy is gonna go somewhere. So when he first starts it up, he'll open this, and that'll open these two little cocks, and that lets the water blow out. So when he first turns it on, you can see the water come out, and after it runs for a second, you can see the steam coming out. So now that we know that, and that you know all the things that are happening out here, let's run it again and see if we can figure out what's going on. Hey, Dale, can you spin her over slow for me for yeah. a second? Yeah. Dale's doing important things. Are your cocks open? Yeah. Okay. But it's on dead. You want me to kick it? Yeah. Could you slide the... Uh... Yeah, you're Perfect. Thank you. Chris. Happy to help, sir. Let's, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I want to relieve that steam in the water. It has nothing to see now. I'll close it. So now that we've ended our steam out. 3500 pounds plus fast is being destroyed in a 1939 farm. Once you get all the water vented out and you start getting steam, then you close the cocks, and now the exhaust steam is just coming out the bottom here, and this is the exhaust pipe. It goes into there, and then it can go up the smokestack. That's a beautiful machine, sir. So is this yours? You own it? Okay. Now, do you want to be just Dale, or do you want me to tell him your whole name? It's going to go on the internet, so oh, you Dale, might have women stalking you. Dale, Dale is good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh.
All right, so I want to thank Dale. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chris. For sharing this with us and with all of my weirdo friends. We got to check out steam engine. And if we're lucky, we might be able to talk Dale into bringing this by the lab sometime and shoot a real production video on it. Thank you, sir. Today's Captain's Blog is made possible by a grant from Luke, the Mad Ginger O'Rourke. Thank you, sir.